Hey guys, RC here, back with episode, I believe this is episode 11 of Starter's Order 7, and uh, we are racing today. Thank you so much for uh, making this the highest viewed series in my channel history. I've had one-off episodes that have been more viewed, you know, how-tos and things like that, but as far as an actual Let's Play series, uh, this is the number one all time in my fourth year as a YouTuber. Uh, so, I, you know, that's probably not saying a whole hell of a lot, but uh, I do appreciate it every time I put one of these up and it, you know, gets, you know, close to 30 views. I'm just amazed and uh, very appreciative that so many of you are interested in the game. Uh, by the way, uh, real quick. Uh, if you're trying to figure out how to use the start it mod, go look up Chris Ormy, O-R-M-I-E. Uh, he is another YouTuber that does Starter's Orders 7 videos, and he actually has a one-off video. Uh, now, I'm recording this on June 11th. I don't remember the exact date, but it was about a month ago. So somewhere around the middle of May on his channel. Uh, and he has a one-off video on how to install the Start It mod. Somebody had asked me, and I just pointed them to his because he's already done the video. No sense in me trying to you know, reinvent the wheel. Uh, so, you know, check out his channel. And uh, for that video, and check out his Starter's Orders videos, too. They're really good. Um, and most of you I see over there commenting on his videos because I watch his videos. So maybe one day he'll come watch my videos. Probably not. But anyway, um, I do talk to him on occasion through his videos and over on the Discord channel. So if you haven't been on the Discord channel, look it up. Uh, I think the, the link to it is over on the Starter's Orders forums. And, uh, yeah, come join us out there because a lot of good stuff going on. I uh, want to give a real quick shout-out. It won't be real quick, I promise. Uh, proxy, no, I don't want to be friends, so quit asking. Uh, that's one of these bots that ask for your channel. Uh, Andreas Munzgard Weir, welcome to the channel twice somehow okay. um mark jarvis welcome to the channel c miller welcome to the channel i do this every one you know try to do this about once a week or so when i have new people coming on board and it's raw i think there's an ointment for that but uh, hopefully that heals up soon but welcome to the channel it's raw michael can seer welcome to the channel and i think that's it that's uh, over the last week so uh hopefully i haven't missed anybody but i uh, wanted to give the quick shout out to all the new subscribers to the channel thank you very much let's get into the racing so i haven't learned anything new since i last recorded so uh, i'm actually recording trying to get ahead I went out of town for a night this week, and then next week I have to go out of town for two nights. So I still try to get my episodes pre-recorded and scheduled on, on the channel to release uh, so you guys don't miss content, even when I'm, you know, a thousand miles away from home. So uh, we're going to effort that. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, we are, I've got at least one race for everybody some of the horses i've actually gone ahead and booked a second race two or three weeks later so we'll see how many races we can get through uh here in the uh allotted time frame today and the first thing i notice is putin is a favorite and you can see i have he's still looking for his maiden and i've moved him up to a mile maiden uh, he's running right about that 22% mark, so he can run seven furlongs to a mile. We had been running him in the five and six furlongs. He had not been doing well. Uh, I think one of you suggested running him at a longer distance, and he is bred for one mile. So his stamina has gone up a little bit. 
So we're going to go ahead and run him in that mile maiden today. I think I have another mate. I think I have a, another maiden set up for him. We may or may not be able to run if we can win today. Also, we have Cashmere Brown uh, going somewhere. Here we go. Uh, over in a class two handicap, not the favorite. And you can see that's a zero to 95 handicap. We're sitting on an 83. I'm going to save this just in case. And let's go do some racing. 13 to 2 odds. We are carrying mid level weight. Tenebrae is only carrying 112 pounds. Uh, they have not finished well. Uh, eighth, sixth, ninth. But uh, Kashmir has not done much better. We do have a win earlier on. But uh, hey, let's see what happens. I don't know why. Why would they give you. I wonder what the difference is here. I've never watched a race from the betting shop because Chris always does it at the race course, and that's all I've ever done. Do you want to check it out and just see what it does? Oh, by the way, somebody asked me a question the other day. Uh, I've given him the answer, but I want to I want to make sure that we address it for anybody else that's curious. It was. Not him. Mark Jarvis. Mark Jarvis. So Mark's question was, of course, we're playing where we're breeding and everything else. He wanted to know if you could play the game just as a betting game. And the answer is yes. Um, don't know how viable it is because I've never done it. But you can see, uh, basically, you would go into the game just like in episode one here. You would sell off that initial lot of horses that you have. And that gives you your bankroll uh, in your bank up here. And instead of taking that money and investing it in your breeding barn, you could just go out to the course. So just like we do, we skip days until we get to a day. You go out to whatever race course you want to. And you would look at this same exact screen uh, and you could put bets on any of these horses. You can look at the tipsters and the paddock, um, you know, whatever you want. Well, you couldn't look at the paddock because... You probably wouldn't hire staff, but you could look at the tipsters. You can make bets. Uh, you choose the horse up here, place your bets down here, and, uh, you know, and have at it. So, yeah, you can, you know, in answer to the question, can you play Starters Order 7 solely as a gambling game? Yes, you can. Fake money. Can't really win anything. But, uh, you know, there's always real horses and online for that. I don't know anything about that. But uh, let's get out to the horse race. See picture favorite, and we are fourth in the pack. Let's watch it from the betting shop. I don't know what it looks like, so let's learn together. Just a one-off here. If it'll work, if it doesn't crash. At the post. All right, there we go. Interesting. Oh, so they actually do have the TV. All right, so we're out to the early lead. Yes, Cashmere Brown out to the lead. This is a 0 to 95 handicap. Emergency exit in the rear. And we have gotten passed up by distant music. And emergency exit is moving up on the inside rail. Six furlongs to go. We are drifting back to mid pack. Hanging in third position currently. There's a move. Distant Music has really opened up a lead. Let's see, where are we at? I have no idea. I can't see the, the furlongs up here. All right, well, we are running pretty well. Distant Music really went out. So I think we might have a chance. Oh, you can press space or skip to two furlongs out. There's the one furlong pull. We are coming up on the lead with Distant Music. He's showing some heart, holding us off, and we are fading out quickly. We made the run, but oh, we just went in the toilet, and we dropped all the way to the back of the pack. That was not good. All right, I don't like that view as much as I... Oh, a new course record by Distant Music, who went out early and held on by two and three-quarter lengths. We do finish fourth. 
that nets us six hundred and twelve dollars. Uh, we were what's that three, four and a half lengths off the lead, so we really fell off at the end. We held off Tenebrae uh, in a dead heat, so that was uh, yeah. The horse ran a little freely, slightly too far. Okay, and against lesser competition. All right, well. Anyway, all right, let's uh, skip this race and result, and let's get up to our race here. All right, Putin is a joint favorite with True Rose. Uh, the betters have him really heavily favored. He is moving well. I'm going to put some money on my boy here. We're going to do a max win bet, 15000 and let's go race. Should have saved there, I have a feeling, but that's all right. On turf. We are starting, uh, we're the number four horse starting here near the outside. We break well with the leaders. All right, number five is Reset City, having to find some space moving to the outside. All right, this is a one mile. So we'll see how this goes. All right, we're currently running in the top four. Reset City just passed his minigun and True Rose out front halfway through the race. A late charge, well, a charge there by Crowning Star. All right, we have made a move. We are up into second. 2.2 furlongs to go. We are right on the heels of True Rose at the two furlong pole. Drifting back a little bit. Drifts over towards the rail and then finds some, moves out to make some space. The one furlong pole puts a move on. There goes some pace to get out into the lead and start to extend Number three, Crowning Star, is not coming with us, and this should be an easy win, and it is for Putin. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that was his one-mile maiden race. So that was actually really exciting. That was exciting. We won a race. It was a one-mile maiden. Yay, Putin. Uh, Mid-division halfway, forged clear. Ooh, he's badass. We found his length, I think. All right, that is good. Lovely horse. Distance was ideal. So the ground, he likes turf, and he the mile, the mile on turf. So that's where we want to be. All right, that's it for today. Nobody in the auction barn that we're going to look at. So Putin has broken his maiden, has jumped his rating up to a 71. That is excellent gets him off the mark and you can see jumping up from that five and six furlongs he just needed to be able to run i guess um is this the rating before the race or after all right well he did win he won handily so we have entered him in an august 9th race so that's about a month away in a class two handicap one mile Let's go take a look at him real quick. Uh, Putin, enter, declarations. All right, so we've had some other horses come in behind us. Uh, we were second in the rating. Is there another one that we would like to do here? Maybe instead. All right, uh, zero to 75, I kind of like that one better. That's in two weeks. There's only seven horses in that field. Uh, Dominant's already running in that one. Nope, we don't want to go head to head. We do have a zero to 80 handicap. That's a big, that's a pretty big field though. All right, well, we're going to stick with that probably. We'll see what that looks like. Again, if you want to just play the betting, uh, you can go into any race day and you can see right here, just from this screen, these are the, this is the track uh, and the race is going on and you'll have two, sometimes two or three tracks up here. Like when we just saw Putin run, we had two columns, two different tracks going on the same day so you can look at uh you can look at cards here you can see the favorites 
all that. And uh, yeah, so you just hit, you would just hit go, go out to the course and do your betting and then move on from there. Now, once you blow through your bankroll, if you're not winning, you know, I guess it's kind of game over because you don't have horses to sell or anything else. But, you know, you could always restart. So, you know, hope that answered your question. But we are going to move to, uh, let's see, we do have breeder sales on the 24th. And I think that's the next date. So we'll just kind of come through here. Make sure I haven't missed anything. All right. Oh, we got a Japanese whore, uh, sire here. Tell you what, I'm going to go after these two horses. We're going to go after uh, Day of Atonement, a five-year-old, and I Isis. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, dipped in silver, nothing there. Jeed is 10 years old, won some handicap races, but I think that's going to be enough. Let's just do these two. All right, let's take a quick look at Isis. All right, not much in the way of potential. All right, that was probably a waste of money. That's too bad. And Day of Atonement. All right, not horrible potential. We actually have 75 extra speed. I think that's a good one. So let's hit our breeding barn. And if we sort by rating, all right, so Isis, let's look at her offspring. All right, we've got uh, no huge winners, no huge winners. Actually, we don't have anybody that won a race, but she did win four of five. All right, well, let's go ahead and breed her with um let's breed her with van dosberg i mean that's our horse we'll see what comes out of that right and then day of atonement i'm gonna breed her let's see what's her offspring look like only one and it's a it's a yearling so Hard to tell what you got there. Let's go ahead and breed uh, nine, ten winners out of eleven. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. The next sale is yearlings in August, so in a month. And let's go ahead and skip to next one day all right Benru adventure so this is our two-year-old she has yet to win her maiden so taking a look we've got her in a class one grade three today and then we've got her set for another maiden in another two or three weeks so this is one we're kind of going out on a limb just to get a get a run in see if she can actually compete and uh, she's had three second place finishes, so we can hope. We can hope. I'm going to go ahead and save because we did come off of that win there. And let's get out to the track. All right. We are not the favorite here anymore. We are carrying a co-lightest amount. We're the only horse besides First Rock without a win, but we do have the third highest rating do have a couple of horses up here that won their debuts their maidens fair enough what are the tipsters saying uh, none of them like us Benru adventure coping well uh, Dasij is slightly agitated all right so let's uh, let's go race hopefully she can get this done today we're on turf we're starting mid pack here at the six furlong pole not a bad start looks like we settle in well 
We are in the chasing pack. We're stalking. We're in fifth position. Head to head. Are we going to make a move? All right, we move to the outside, find some space at the two furlong pull. We've got Mont, Mont Bazil and Yiao. I recognize Yiao from uh, Chris Ormy. All right, we're making a run. We're up into second. The one furlong pull, we're right on the heels. We've taken the lead. We're pulling away. And can we hold on? Yes. Finru Adventure gets, is that a grade three win? That's going to be huge. <coughs> a grade three win. Was not expecting that from a horse that had not won her maiden. That's $22,000 in our pocket. That is nice. Ridden as a closer. Spot on today. Enjoyed the ground. Very nice. And we will get out of here. Nothing in the auction. All right. So she loses her second race, which was a maiden. She's already won. All right. We're still a short range horse, even though she can run a mile. She, her stam hasn't come up. <coughs> I think we've got really good constitution, but our juvenile constitution is pretty low. I think I am going to, now that she's got a win under her belt, I'm going to send her out to grass for the rest of the season. That's five races. We're going to go ahead and retire her for the rest of this year. Two-year-old season will be done. We'll have her come back in the three-year-old season. And I may do that with the other two two-year-olds. Putin, um, do I want to run him again? I may not. That was a pretty dominant win for him. It was his maiden, though. So we do have a class two, a group two race. Maybe keep that. And we do have a handicap for dominant as well. Okay, well, I think we're going to keep those. Third half, I hear a lot of you guys talking in the comments that third half should be a wonderful horse. I just don't know what to do with him because I have no idea what I'm doing in this game. Again, we uh, we ran a six furlong. He looked better than he did at a mile. So I think we've gone back to the six furlongs. Even though he has the stamina, six and seven might be... You know what? Is there a seven furlong race? There are seven furlong races. They're all selling races, though. That's a class four handicap up to an 85. What are we running here? A class three handicap to 90. And a, but where you notice we're, we're actually the best rating. I think this is going to be a good race for him. And then this one is another one. Now, Coyote is much better rating wise I may want to pull out of that one that, that's a six furlong class two handicap so I need something around August 12th this is actually around the King's Bishop no we don't want to go into that I think he's got the ability, he's got the ratings, but I don't know whether to be a grade one horse. So I want to kind of stay away from that, but this one is intriguing me. It's seven furlongs. It'll be a slightly different distance. I'm going to enter him there, and then let's go... August 12th, and we're going to remove him from that race. All right, so I like that. So we've got a six and a seven furlong. I feel good about that. At least we'll see something different from him, and that puts him right into his wheelhouse for, from a breeding indicator standpoint. Yeah, I'm liking that. All right, 
Uh, let's see. Skip to next and one day. All right, Miss Aura. Now, this is the four-year-old that we bought last, I think it was last episode. She won her debut race for us, and she is the favorite in the Bing Crosby, a Class 2 race with a handicap up to 120 on dirt. Maybe she can get it done. Hopefully, we are the favorites. I'm going to save here. Let's check out the tipsters. They do like us. She's coping well. I'm going to go ahead and put some money on her then. So we're going to do a max to win. 63000 Now there's even more pressure. Six furlong handicap. Class 2 or grade 2. Whatever you want to call it. We're on the outside. We break well. Out to a quick lead. I like how he's already reined her in. Three white horses and a brown horse. We certainly stand out in the crowd. That is a good sign. It makes it easier for me to see. All right, we drop to the back of the pack. Four and a half furlongs to go. We're all bunched up, though. I don't think there's a whole lot to worry about. Euro coin lady out in the lead. And we're all bunched together at the two furlong pole. Now, does Miss Aura have anything in her to make the run here? Everybody's stride for stride. Nobody's pulling away. The one furlong pull. If we're going to show anything, Miss Aura, now is the time. Pick it up if you would. We're head to head for second with Amused. We've moved into second and we take the wire in second place, but we had no closing speed whatsoever for Eurocoin Lady. Oh, that's disappointing. All right, well, we do pick up uh, 86000 in prize money. Never able to challenge. Let's see what the jockey had to say. Uh, trip suited, appeared to suit well. So I think we've got a good range for her. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and get out of the race today. Um, a second place finish, she's on $159,000 in winnings. Okay, we don't have anything else set up for her. Let's see if there's anything that's popped up here. So that was a grade two or class two, but uh, not, but we competed. We did compete. So I would not mind another, uh, let's see, she's bred at five furlongs. Do we have anything else in a five furlong race? Selling, selling. We've got an, oh, 15 horses. Oh, my God. All right, we don't want to do that. Selling race. A grade three. Class one, grade three. Does have nine horses. Everybody's over 100 rating. We are at... 105 uh, I think that I don't know I think that's pushing it I think that, now this is in South Africa a lot of these are South African horses I've seemed to do well going to South Africa if I enter the horse there we'd carry 135 Why not? Why not? Let's go for it. You only live once. All right, but we do have third half going today. Let's save. Go out to the track. Third half is not the favorite. Woodbro is. Oh. We are, God, we are the long shot. I just cannot figure this horse out. We're, the, we're co best rating. We're just not in any type of form. Looking fit and well. Woodbro is parading lazily, but he's fit. Well, hopefully we have a good showing. So class three, six furlong on turf. Again, we're starting middle of the pack here. 
and we break really late and we are in the rear all right we move up quickly with the with the closers we move up into a stalking position that's good three furlongs we're in third position all right two furlongs we do have Woodbro just passing us Silas is coming we're fighting a little bit there for fourth position Woodbro's coming into second at the furlong pole and charging we are drifting and we're going to finish last I am calling it now there is nothing there a new course record by Mondalita who held off Woodbro and we actually held on by three quarters of a length we faded I don't know what he's got just beaten by better horses so rating doesn't always mean anything at all all right that was a class three we're going into a class four at seven furlongs so seven is a new distance for him he's really struggled at a mile but now he's dropping off in these handicaps so i just don't know what to make of it very very disappointing we do have dominant going today he's got ten thousand in career earnings he came off a win in his last race that was nice his maiden and today we're going up to a one mile in a class six handicap on dirt so that is going to give us a look remember he is wearing uh, a nose band uh, last race so we'll see if that does anything for him beacon lady there these are the kind of races i like to bet the ones with you know three or four horses just because you know it gives you a 25 percent chance of being right you know even i could be right you know twice a day watching a broken clock all right, we are the favorites here. All right, do the tipsters like us? Uh, the one tipster that's calling it, we're parading well. Uh, I'm not gonna put any money on him, so let's go race. All right, this will be the last race of the episode. We're over the 30 minute mark already, so maybe Dominant can close us out in fashion. We are starting on the outside. Eh, a little bit of a slow break. But settles into stride. We've got a long way to go at one mile. We're on the outside. Number five is Diamond Vine has moved quickly up into second position. We're on the outside with uh, the we're leading the chasers. It appears uh, more than many has moved out. We're back to the back. Oh my God! All the way to the back of the pack. Two furlong pole. We are trying to get outside to find some space. Can we make a challenge here? All right, one furlong to go. We're closing in. We're about six lengths back. I don't think we're going to have it in us. We might be able to get up into fourth, third. Oh, I think we got up into second. That was a real good closing run in the final couple of fur you know, furlong pulls. So that was good. We finished second. Okay. That's going to put uh, 1500 bucks in the pocket. Midfield halfway, ran on, two and a half lengths back, and a short head in front of Alamo Bay. Diamond Vine, who had that lead, finished three quarters of a length back. Ridden as a closer, slightly too far. Okay. That's, that's something to take note of. All right, so dominant, slightly too far. So it, it was a mile. He's actually at a mile, which he's bred for, but maybe not quite ready. Maybe not quite ready. But I do like that we got a maiden win and a second in a handicap. So why don't we go ahead and send him out to grass for the rest of his two-year-old season? We are in August so let him rest up, you know, and then we'll see what his ratings look like for next year. Uh, we may end up selling him. I don't know, because he does have that excitable factor. 
and I do know that is something we like to stay away from. We do have some uh, horse racing set up for next episode already. You can see the races there. Uh, but hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the date notification bell for daily update notifications on my channel. We will see you guys here in the next episode for some more racing as we close down the 2025 racing season, or at least head in that direction. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Bye.